that's fine while it's still uh, wet and workable I'm going to incise into the paint with the end of a, of a brush I'll sharpen this one with a pencil sharpener the end of, a, of my uh, all-rounder and I'm able to draw shapes in the wet paint this is incising and scraping back uh, which helps to make the harbour wall look more stony and more like it's built of big granite blocks it's actually the harbour down at at um, Newquay most people go surfing and they go to the beach at Newquay but there is a nice little harbour hidden away and that starts to look quite stony I'm going to leave it like that to dry because I don't want this to run into the subsequent layers this uh, edge of the the painting is now dry down this side of the uh, harbour wall and I'm going to brush in a mixture of cerulean and ultramarine um, because I want the boats I'm going to paint around these I want to get this on now while it's while, uh, while we've got the time to, to do this and when it's dry I'm going to paint the back of this harbour wall but I want the boats here to be uh, pale I want the boats to, to be uh, a pale blue or a pale bluey grey not white because they're going to look too too close otherwise so I'm taking those back a bit by putting some uh, of the the blue in so they look further away I'm also going to run a little dark line underneath this is the same color as the near wall is but a little dark line just for a, a hint of a, a shadow under there or a reflection and then we'll wait for this one to dry and then finish this harbor wall before we look back at our main boat I've left this for about two minutes and I think this is dry just touch it gently with a fingertip and see that's that's uh, that's dry and uh, I'm using a a gray a, a paler and cooler version than I use for the nearer harbour wall these are two walls one behind the other at the harbour entrance and I want this one to look further away so it's the same mix um, of colours as the nearer one but there is more blue in it and therefore it's going to look cooler and further away I'm not masking these boats off I'm, I'm just putting them in because I don't want the distraction of having the the vessels to to be jumping out at us this is background after all it's not what the subject is so we're going to put that in and eventually work back in and put in the little cabins and other odds and ends that are there but I don't want to make this too dominant these are just background boats and I'm using a, the same gray a very pale gray add a little bit of water I'm going to put in a tiny bit of phthalo green now this is a tricky one to master it's a nasty uh, vivid green if you get it wrong um, but I want a hint of a, a sea green about this so I've got that grey that's in the harbour wall and I've added a little bit of phthalo green to it and I'm going to bring that down so we've got the look of, of water here leaving a, a few little gaps horizontal strokes work best for water the few little white gaps will start to look like waves eventually bringing this around the harbour wall here using a, a flat half inch brush I'm going to do most of this with that brush and as we come towards the the water's edge I'm painting around my little figure and and the boat that he's launching uh, and we'll just wait then for this area to dry before I can put in this the, the foreshore working back in with a cerulean blue to the distant uh, harbour wall while it's still wet I'm putting in a few ripples getting that movement of the water it's not waves because this is a harbour so it's just little ripples really and a little bit more cerulean blue and so I'm using cerulean blue phthalo green into the the grey that I'd previously mixed with ultramarine and burnt sienna and I'm going to put this in as a shadow underneath this area which will nicely silhouette my little figure and his or her boat there so that's quite a nice little silhouette and I now have to wait for this to dry a uh, few minutes only a couple of minutes okay it's crunch time now we're going to have to take the masking fluid off now and to get the masking fluid off safely when the paint is 
absolutely dry that you've applied, rub across it with gentle pressure with a bit of kitchen roll. Don't pull it like this because it will tear the paper quite often. I've left a little bit of the, uh, the white of the masking fluid because that's going to make it easier to paint the, uh, the gunnels of the, the boat in. That's not bad, I'm quite pleased with that. That's given us a nice sharp edge there. While we've got the masking fluid on here still, I'm going to put in a little yellow band around the, the gunnels of the fishing boat. I'm going to drop the stern down a little bit. I, I've drawn it a bit too high, but again, with, with a flat brush on its edge, on its side like that, down it goes. That's a bit the other side. Wait for this to dry, and then we'll take the masking fluid off there. And while this is drying, I'm going to mix up some colour for the hull and I'm going to mix up some colour for the sail and for the top of the cabin.